After spending an entire season paddling the Ripper Too Large, I want to give you my thoughts and breakdowns on this boat. For myself, I intentionally got this boat in a large because I wanted a river running half slice machine. I did lots of research when making this decision. The medium is definitely way more playful. The stern is effortless to get down, but it would be very spicy on some class four rapids. So I chose the R2L for its volume, larger rocker and edges. Also, this boat is significantly wider behind the hips of the paddler. It is a completely different beast when compared to the medium. And as you can see, I fall on the low end of the weight range spectrum here. I'm about 175 to 180. So let's start with river running, as this is why I chose this boat. I really dedicated myself to using this boat on any river in previous seasons, I would have chose my creek boat, the Scorch. In some ways it performed just like the Scorch and how it rides over waves and holes. The biggest difference between the Ripper Too Large and the Scorch is that this stern can be engaged to turn the boat on a dime when needed. Surprisingly, I have not had the stern initiate unintentionally while paddling this boat. Let's talk about the edges on this boat. I have really loved Piranha Kayaks for the edges. I have paddled the Ripper One Large, Scorch, and even the Burn first generation, and Piranha has always seemed to put a lot of effort into making these edges perform. I have found that the Scorch and Ripper One Large have edges that lock. While these can be great for really nailing those cross current speed maneuvers, it can also send you careening towards places you may not want to go. The edges of the Piranha Ripper 2 do not lock, however you can hold an edge for cross current speed and disengage them as needed. I really enjoy how the edges on this boat respond to my knees. Next up is boofing. The R2L is a boofing machine. Not only does this boat have lots of rocker, it has the ability to load its stern and really get that bow up high. It lands flat off drops effortlessly. I find it skips when I boof over ledges and holes, which is exactly what I want to happen. Because this boat is stable, easy to control, and can boof effortlessly, I actually enjoy it for creaking as well, and this probably comes at no surprise. Okay, now for the fun stuff. A huge benefit to the half slice is the ability to play when there is an opportunity. We'll start off with wave surfing. When I say I've surfed a lot of waves in this boat, I definitely mean it. I would describe the style of the transitioning of edge to edge as slow and steady with this boat. This is because of that extra width, which provides that beautiful stability. Yet, there's always a sacrifice. Unless you're on an absolutely massive wave, you will not be throwing this monster of a half slice around. See what I mean? I've surfed a lot of waves in this boat. Here we are at Skookumchuck Narrows. There's nothing fancy about how I'm surfing this boat here. However, for my first time on this wave, I felt very safe to handle the mess of currents behind Skookumchuck, which includes whirlpools, boils, and you name it. As far as soul surfing goes though, this was so nice. It just handled everything so easily. It's a very smooth transition as it goes side to side. The nose never pearls because of that rocker. Everything that's going on as you surf is very predictable in this boat. Unless you try to really hammer on those edges, it does want to spin and it will. It will definitely flat spin. So on waves, it's safe to say this boat can do it. It can surf it. However, it's not going to be throwing big dynamic moves. Hole surfing, this boat is fun to plug that giant bow and get some major air. The edges and stability of the Ripper Too Large definitely give it a lot of control when surfing in holes. 
It is surprisingly loose when side surfing and spinning, and you can really make your way around the hole and be where you want to be. Through the use of mind reading, I know what you're probably asking. Gord, this is all great, but how does the boat tail you? I can tell you with certainty, it tailies. The stern is super slicey and easy to initiate with the proper technique. It's not as easy as the medium though, but it's still so satisfying to get this giant beast vertical. And even more rewarding to get it rotating. The best places to tailie the Ripper too large are where the current is strongest. And it's even better if the current has a good rotation. I want to conclude with some goods and bads. Let's start with the goods. This boat is very versatile and capable of running creeks, big water, drops, and technical features. It's playful enough for a boat that is larger for river running. My favorite section of river with this boat would be the Fraser Pipeline. Okay, now the bads. My biggest complaint is the outfitting. Piranha, you can do better, and this is this complaint is universal. I have sat in many boats with outfitting that is far superior. I definitely recommend you use thigh hookers, which make a massive difference and should probably come standard with this boat. And I might sound a little bit, uh, what's the word, upset maybe, but I kind of am. Um, you know, charging over $2,000 Canadian for a, a kayak, you have an expectation of quality. So this has been my in-depth review on the Large Ripper 2. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more content, subscribe. Your subscriptions do not mean that I make more content. I will always make content as this is my passion and I enjoy doing it.